iPhone 16 Pro is essentially identical to 15 Pro, but we already have the rumors regarding the iPhone 17 Pro, and it looks that it will be a definitive iPhone that is really worth it. Yes, we have a whole year until the arrival of the iPhone 17 Pro, but come, we all enjoy the rumors of iPhones, right? It seems that Apple has not yet determined on whether the new model will be dubbed 17 Air. What seems secure is that the Pro Max will retain the design of the iPhone 16 Pro and feature the same displays. However, the 17 Air will differentiate drastically. This new model will have a screen of around 6.6 .6 inches placing between the standard iPhone and the Pro Max. Filtrations are now a bit conflicting since some state a size of 6.55 inches, while others propose 6.65. The prominent iPhone's analyst, Ming Chi Ko has highlighted the particular traits that the iPhone 17 Pro Max will have. In the first place, it stands out for having 12 GB per seconds of RAM, whereas the 17 Air, iPhone 17, iPhone 17 Pro models, and SE4 will have 8 GB per seconds. This RAM increase will allow the new functions of Apple intelligence to run faster and more efficiently. Another important component is the update of the cooling system that will mix steam camera technology with graphite leaves. Meanwhile, all iPhone 17 models will have a processor produced with two nanometers and new neural nuclei, also with the objective of increasing Apple intelligence. In short, while other models will retain the level of their temperature, the 17 Pro Max may drain heat more effectively. According to this Chinese analyst, Ming Chi Ko, the device differentiation strategy will continue to offer higher features, in addition to a screen larger than that of the Pro model, both on iPhone 17 and on iPhone 18. The decision to equip the iPhone 17 Pro 17 Max with 12 RAM is a planned movement of Apple, as it seems to me, that emphasizes the differentiation between high-end models and the cheapest. The greatest memory will allow Apple Intelligence's advanced functionalities to be even more effective than in the iPhone 16 Pro. And of course, Apple does everything to build its AI and to turn all the older gadgets useless because they are not going to support Apple intelligence. A little harsh, but it's marketing. You can't do anything here. They have to sell more iPhones, right? But in any case, for now, Apple intelligence is not available in most places of the world. And to prove it, we have to pretend that we are in the United States. There is no other way to utilize it presently. As for the design and thickness, it is expected that the iPhone Air would use titanium or aluminum, depending on how Apple decides to position it in the market. If they decide for a more luxury approach, they are likely to use titanium, thereby replacing the aluminum of the iPhone Plus. Regarding the thickness, considering that the most recent current iPad Pro has 5.1mm, it is logical to believe that Apple will aim to accomplish something similar with the iPhone 17 Air. In comparison, the iPhone 16 Pro does not seem to stir much enthusiasm. We look for big enhancements and actual changes, not simply slightly larger versions of old iPhones. It is here where the iPhone 17 series could give us something really new. And if the reports are accurate, the entire line might adopt the technology of two nanometers, as I have already told you, and it will be a very amazing improvement as Apple recently applied the 3 nanometers technology with the iPhone 15 Pro and 16 Pro. This jump to 2 nanometers would suggest a greater density of transistors, resulting in enhanced performance and efficiency. But it looks like Apple has identified a supplier for iPhone 17 Air displays. According to DigiTimes, the Novatech Group firm has introduced a new OLED TDD by screen version that is going to be advertised as the thinnest screen in the world. Previously, there were rumors that Apple was in negotiations with Novatech Group for displays production. This peculiarity could be applied on the upcoming iPhone 17 Air that many insiders forecast about 2025. There are hardly no thinner options than this TDI screen in the market. The news that Apple is associated with Novatech Group for the supply of OLED TDDI screens for the iPhone 17 Air is quite intriguing and suggests that the company is willing to innovate in the design of its devices, which it has done for several years, because the iPhones of recent years are very similar to the outside. The hunt for thinner displays might not only add a bit to the most elegant, newer, more modern design, but it could also enhance the energy efficiency of the device, which is vital for more immersive experience in games, films, other things, other things, but let's see. 
At least it seems that Apple opted to innovate the screen on the iPhone 17, which is already a lot. Thank you very lot, Tim. And yes, it seems that Apple is already testing with the iPhone 17 Pro with a new single button that will replace all volume adjustment button and the action button. It is probable that it functions similarly to camera control. The idea of a unique button that combines volume control and action button is an interesting proposal that might simplify the user experience by decreasing the number of physical buttons on the device that has grown too long in recent years. Action button, capture button, other relevant buttons. This innovation could result in a more simple design, more attractive, coinciding with the aesthetics that Apple seeks in its goods because the essence of Apple products, in any case, is aesthetics. The dynamic island on top of every iPhone takes up quite a lot of real estate on the screen, but it doesn't have much to give back. Talk about the point of diminishing returns, right? Analyst Jeff Pugh has revealed that Apple looks to be working on a repair. This is what he had to say. He chatted to the folks at Mac Rumors, and they published a comprehensive article on the next big change for the dynamic island. First, we must clarify that he touted this modification just for the forthcoming iPhone 17 Pro Max, not the other sister. According to Re, Dynamic Island will grow substantially smaller because of some new technology they wish to deploy. They've been working with something termed MetaLens Tech that could reduce the additional space occupied by selfie cam and face ID in the notch, so the Dynamic Island will shrink in size. It's generally curved lenses on top of the iPhone selfie cam, and that's how it redirects light into the sensor. But this MetaLens can decrease the additional bulk of such lens type. We will see a flatter, slimmer lens on the iPhone 17 Pro Max's selfie shooter with etchings for perfect light focus. He didn't claim this anywhere, but we believe Apple is taking a page out of the MetaQuest 2's book. They employed a Fresnel lens to minimize weight and thickness, and still preserve the fidelity and Apple has its eye on the same lens type. This is a smart method for a selfie cam, but there's still no indication of how it will relate to the face ID. However, the implementation of the system will be important. If the new button manages to deliver intuitive and efficient control, it could increase the usefulness of the iPhone. On the other hand, there is a concern that a single button limits the flexibility and speed of use that users generally have with dedicated buttons, since they are accustomed to action button, and the users of the iPhone 16 Pro will get used to capture buttons. So it will be interesting to monitor how these tests are designed and what impact will have on the way users utilize these devices. They will genuinely accomplish anything that is beneficial and that is comfy or will merely add more complexity so that we do not know what button to click. And according to expert Ross Yang, all iPhone 17 models, including the new form of this iPhone 17 Air, will have support for promotion and a frequency of 120 Hertz on their screens. However, there is possible that there are some differences in functionality compared to the Pro models, and in addition, internal changes are anticipated in the Face ID sensor system of the iPhone 17 Pro, although there is still a long way before it is possible to implement sensors completely integrated into the screen. The presence of promotion and a frequency of 120 Hz in all models of the iPhone 17 is wonderful news since this technology considerably improves visual experience by delivering softer displacements and a greater capacity for response. And yes, that the normal iPhone 16 per thousand dollars does not have 120 Hz is a shame. I have no other words for it, given even the middle end Androids now have 120 Hz screens. That could draw a base to a base of larger users since high-frequency technology has shown to be highly valued by customers who desire fluid performance, notably in games and applications. The notion that the iPhone 17 may encounter modifications in the Face ID sensor system is also a little intriguing, but the transition to entirely integrated sensors on the screen is not close. With iPhone 17, it will not appear. A nigh advance in that direction shows that Apple continues to innovate in the field of muodometry. However, it is crucial that these advancements translate into a more real experience. If Apple manages to improve the Face ID functionality without sacrificing security, it may be a tremendous breakthrough, but you have to see how it will work, for now they are merely rumors. And a little of the hues too. According to source Majin Buu, it is likely that the new iPhone 17 Titanium line is available in one of the following colors, dark green titanium, turquoise titanium, 
green titanium. And also a bright color is indicated with a slightly peculiar number, 4S00B7, which correlates to a purple tone that might also be considered as an option, as green titanium, 004-49 as teal titanium, and 003800 as dark green titanium. While these color selections are not finalized, there is a significant likelihood that a teal titanium variation will make it to the final lineup. The iPhone 17 Pro could signify a shift from Apple's normally more modest color selections for its Pro models, which now include black, white, gold, and gray for the iPhone 16 Pro. The arrival of green options would appeal to people who demand more bright choices in Apple's premium selection. But new colors are offered every year and rumors are quite varied during the year. So we will be careful. As soon as fresh leaks arise, I will immediately inform you. See this video on the troubles of iPhone 16 and see you next. Bye-bye.